In today's episode of how to get into real estate, I'm going to be talking about special provisions and more specifically, the special provisions we might use when we are buying a property. For those of you who stick around to the end of this segment, I am going to give away a list of all the special provisions I have used or the ones that I most often use. It's about 32 different special provisions that I like to review before I consummate a deal in writing. I'll give you a download of this at the end of this segment. In the creative real estate investing business, special provisions are almost always a necessity. We're going to learn the definition of special provisions, when to use special provisions, and then we're going to give some examples of some special provisions that I've used often. Then I'm going to tell you a little secret about how I know not to miss a special provision that needs to go in my contract. It's a little trick you'll enjoy. So let's define special provisions and here's how it's written from the dictionary. Special provisions are for any arrangements between the buyer and the seller that are not covered in the state promulgated forms. It may be best to use the addendum available to realtors for routine arrangements. But if there's not a routine arrangement, you need to make up your own special provision and add it in writing where the little section in the contract says special provisions. Special provisions are really important because everything needs to be in writing. There is no whimsical, oh yeah, well, we'll go ahead and do that too. No, it has to be in writing. If you have a contract in place and then you agree to something in addition to or that changes that contract, it needs to be in writing and you can use special provisions to do that. Or you can add an addendum to in the special provisions section. I like to put in special provisions, see addendum A attached here to and made a part hereof. And then I put in addendum A, whatever our agreement is. A lot of times what we want to say is too much to fit into this little space they give you on the contract. I've used a lot of different special provisions and when I find one that's unique or that I've never had to use before, I add it to my list and I keep this list all the time. So some of the special provisions that I've used are like when I'm dealing with a motivated seller who wants to finance the sale of the property to me. I have a special provision that deals with that in a, way, a place where I can put all the terms and describe exactly what that financing is going to look like, what that note is going to look like. I also use it sometimes when I'm buying a house that's completely full of trash. Have you ever bought a hoarder house? Well, that trash can be very, very expensive. Five, six, eight, ten thousand dollars to get that house just cleared out. Not cleaned, just cleared out. And so sometimes when I recognize that I'm dealing with a hoarder and that this house is stacked to the gills with trash, I put in this trash removal special provision, which will compensate me if they don't clean out the house. Sometimes I feel it's necessary to explain to the person that I'm buying the house from that I am a professional and that the price I'm offering is not representative of the market price. Sometimes I do that just to cover myself. Sometimes I'll add special provisions in that are to the benefit of my seller, just so it gets them excited. Like I might add into the special provisions that the buyer, me, is accepting the property as is, where is, with all its imperfections and defects and without warranty or guarantee whatsoever. I'll put that in there to give the seller comfort. It's really a special provision against me, but I'm willing to accept the property with that and it kind of helps me sell the idea of I'm buying this property. All right. So there's all these special provisions I've used in my life and there's about 32 of them right here in my hand. And there's this little secret I use that helps me remember which special provisions I need on which properties. But before I get to that, do me a favor, hit that like button and share this episode with your friends. If you find that we've been insightful, have helped you or have inspired you or motivated you, please hit that like button and that share button. Very important. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe now because you'll want to know about all this content that we're going to be delivering over the next months and years. Okay. What's my little secret? It's not complicated and it's simple. 
I take my special provisions, all 32 of them, you know, three, four pages of them, and I put them on top of all my blank purchase contracts. It's the first pages of every contract I have. If you're a professional buyer, you know you have to strike fast. You have contracts in your car, in your trunk, in your briefcase. You have stacks of contracts. You're ready to go. You can buy three houses, four houses a day if you need to because you're a pro and you've got these contracts already lined out. All I'm saying is put these special provisions on the top. As you're sizing up a house, as you're writing the contract, you can start to read down this list of all the special provisions you've ever used and the ones that you need for the property you're dealing with today will jump off the page at you and you'll be going, oh, I need to put in number four and I need to put in number nine and I need to put in number 13. Oh, this is great. Oh, and I need to put in number 20. You know, you would never remember them in a million years. But the fact that you can go right down the list while you're staring at the house, while you're writing the contract, those special provisions you need will jump off the page at you. As promised, I'm going to give you a link where you can download all of my special provisions. Now you can use them as you want. You can add them, you can subtract them, you can put your own into them, put your own twist. One thing I do want to say is I'm not an attorney. I'm not a licensed legal representative. So I, these are the ones I've used for better or for worse. You can use them as an example or you can copy them if you want to, but you do so at your own risk. I strongly suggest that you always have a lawyer look over your legal contracts and all your special provisions if you're making them up yourself. So go to 1000houses.com forward slash buying provisions and you'll get this copy of my special provisions. But stick around for the next episode because I'm going to be talking about the selling provisions next.